Acute metatarsal fractures are very common in athletics and unfortunately in everyday life. The mechanism of injury is very similar to a toe sprain, but oftentimes you will see these fractures due to direct trauma, such as a person being stepped on or something is being dropped on that toe. The signs and symptoms include deformity if you're lucky. Oftentimes it's hard to see any deformity. There will be localized pain over the fracture site, crepitus if the person will let you touch it, and disability. So that individual is pretty much going to be limping around. The treatment for these injuries, if aligned correctly, it'll simply be a cast, but oftentimes a pinning will have to take place as well. There are two specific fractures of the metatarsal that I want to talk about. The first one is the dancer's fracture. The dancer fracture occurs when there's an avulsion fracture of the perineal brevis where it inserts on the fifth metatarsal at the fifth metatarsal tuberosity. The mechanism of injury is twofold. First, there can be a forced inversion. When there is a forced inversion, you will see an eccentric overload that's directed at the tendon insertion itself. Secondarily, if you have an eccentric force that is greater than the concentric force of that muscle again, that can also cause that avulsion to take place. The signs and symptoms are going to be similar to those of a fracture, but you will notice that there's localized swelling at the base of the fifth metatarsal. If you are doing an evaluation and you find that there's pain and point tenderness at the base of the fifth metatarsal and or there's pain with restricted eversion, you should suspect that there's a fracture and refer for an x-ray. Range of motion wise, you're going to see a decreased inversion and eversion during active range of motion. And you are going to use standard practice fracture tests, including the four that you see here, longitudinal compression, tap, squeeze, and seesaw test. Manual muscle testing wise, because it is that perineal brevis that has avulsed the fifth metatarsal, it will have a very weak and painful contraction. Diagnosis will need to be confirmed through x-ray and this is treated as a fracture, so there will be casting and if the fracture is unstable, pinning will be required. The second specific type of metatarsal fracture is the Jones fracture. The Jones fracture is also to the fifth metatarsal, but it is about one centimeter distal to the tuberosity on that diaphysis. The mechanism of injury is going to include an indirect loading with plantar flexion and eversion, or a plantar flexed foot with a lateral load to the foot. Signs and symptoms, very sim similar to the dancer's fracture, you're going to see localized swelling to that fifth metatarsal. However, it is going to be more of the proximal diaphysis, as well as that localized pain and point tenderness. Again, if the person will let you test, you may also notice crepitus. Range of motion wise, you will see a decreased inversion and eversion active range of motion. Special tests, again, your standard of practice fracture tests for metatarsals will be completed. Manual muscle testing will include perineal brevis testing, so you will have weak and painful plantar flexion and eversion. It will also have to be diagnosed through an x-ray. Treatment, same type of treatment for any other fracture. You'll see a short leg toe to knee cast. There'll be non-weight bearing six to eight weeks. In addition, a surgical screw may have to be inserted to stabilize that fracture.